The Central Asian Republic of Uzbekistan is the second largest exporter of cotton in the world. One third of the population are forced to work for the government's billion dollar cotton industry. Water and chemicals used to grow Uzbekistan's white gold are causing an environmental catastrophe. Cotton production has all but eradicated the Aral Sea. The Aral fishing fleet used to land over 40,000 tons of fish annually. Now it lies stranded on the former seabed, contaminated with salt and pesticide residues. Windstorms spread this toxic dust, causing alarmingly high rates of tuberculosis and cancer. Nearly every day, dust storms, you know, dust storms, every day. And the consequence of it, it's, it is spreading of lung disease. Aralsk in Kazakhstan, once a thriving fishing port, now lies 80 kilometers from the sea. The collapse of the fishing industry has annihilated the local economy. The primary cause of the environmental crisis has been irrigation. Since Soviet times, water was taken from rivers that fed the Aral Sea to transform vast areas into cotton fields. Uzbekistan continues to mismanage this vital resource. Up to 60% of diverted water is lost through evaporation and leakage and never reaches the crops. Due to underinvestment and a shortage of agricultural machinery, 90% of the cotton harvest is gathered by hand, often by children. Schools are closed across the country as hundreds of thousands of children from the age of seven are taken by their teachers to work long days in the cotton fields. Many students they said that we are like slaves and we are tired, we want to go home, we are hungry, we are cold, but they cannot go because if they will refuse to go to take part in this cotton campaign, they can be fired from the university or college and they are afraid of course of it. They are given no protective gear of any kind, so they'll be picking cotton in bare hands, usually in, their, in, in torn clothing, uh, with sometimes nothing more than slippers or sandals on their feet. And this is very, very difficult work. It's, it's, it's back-breaking work. There's no drinking water given to them in many instances, and they resort to drinking right out of irrigation canals, uh, which carries with all kinds of risks for waterborne uh, infections and diseases. Each child is expected to achieve a daily quota. Usually, of course, they have to be paid, but at the end of the harvest, many of them, they even remained in debt because the amount of cotton which they collected is not enough to cover expenses of the state for their food and bed. Children are not the only victims of Uzbekistan's system of compulsory labor. Teachers, doctors and factory workers are forced to leave their jobs and go to work in cotton fields with no additional compensation. Some risk crossing the border to Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan as they can't feed their families with the salaries they get at home. <laughs> Life for Uzbek cotton farmers is grim. They are forced to grow cotton and sell it to state-owned companies for a fraction of the market price. The state controls everything needed to cultivate the crop, so often expenses outweigh income, and despite their hard labor, farmers end up in spiraling debt. 
it would actually be much better off if they could just grow some crops to eat on the land instead of all this cotton, the proceeds from which just go to the very rich and already corrupt people who run the country. President Islam Karimov and those close to him are able to allocate Uzbekistan's billion dollar cotton revenues with little public scrutiny. Karimov takes a ruthlessly authoritarian approach to all forms of opposition. In May 2005, government troops ferociously crushed a public demonstration in Andijan province. <laughs> The government refused calls for an international investigation and hundreds fled across the border in fear. Europe buys one third of Uzbek cotton, contributing $350 million annually to one of Central Asia's most brutal regimes. The main area in which Western companies, I think, are complicit in, in this very nasty picture is through their, through their dealings with uh, the very uh, corrupt uh, politicians and businessmen who are the ones uh, ultimately profiting uh, from, from cotton in Uzbekistan. Western companies and consumers must refuse to buy cotton produced through human rights abuses and environmental destruction. This whole thing is a disaster in every way, on a scale that would cause total outrage if it happened anywhere else in the world.